Hi, my name is Wendy Blight, and it is my joy to spend the next few minutes with you as we begin our final online study of 2022. I can't believe it. Help is here. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be learning from our dear friend and gifted Bible teacher and author, Max Licato. He is the author of Help Is Here. Max, it is an honor to have you here. And I know you know how much we love you here at OBS because we have done many of your studies and always get amazing, amazing reviews. So thank you for joining us. Wendy, it's my honor. My only regret is that we're not in person so we can uh, chat, you know, face to face. But oh. this is second best and I'm really grateful to have this opportunity. Oh, well, we agree. We, you and I agreed beforehand. We so wish we could be together like we have been the past few times. But, you know, as our team prepared for our time together today, this teaching time, we saw this as a great opportunity to just ask you frequently asked questions because you and I talked about beforehand that there's a lot of material out there, but it's not always easy to access. It's not always easy to understand. But with you, your voice makes it easy to understand. And so I'm going to have one question each week. So I'm going to start with our first question and I'm going to read it to make sure that I read it correctly. And that is, we know that God is three persons in one, right? God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. And, and in Christianity terms, we call that, call the Holy Spirit and God, the three parts, the Trinity. So we'd love to know from you the unique qualities what unique qualities does the holy spirit have and what roles does the holy spirit play that god the father and god the son do not what distinguishes the holy okay spirit? okay that that is a great place to start it really is um, according to the bible our godhead is at once one and three god is god the father god is god the son and God is God the Spirit. And sometimes we struggle to understand this, yet there are similarities in our lives. I am one person, uh, yet I am a husband to my wife. I'm a father to my children. I'm a grandfather to Rosie and Max. I am one person, but I'm expressed in three different roles. Now, this metaphor, it's not perfect because the Trinity is comprised of three persons who are together one person. The work of the Holy Spirit is unique because the work of the Spirit seems to be to complete and sustain what God the Father has planned and what God the Son has begun. Mm. Perfect example. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, the Spirit of God was hovering or moving upon the face of the waters. The Spirit appears after the work of creation has begun. Another example is Pentecost. It is the Spirit who gives power to the church that Jesus began. The so Holy good. Spirit is, is the person of the Trinity through whom God is, is most active today. Uh, he's called the guarantee of our salvation. So again, what Christ began at, Sal at Calvary, the Spirit sustains and completes in our lives. Now, I think to help us understand this, we can look at these metaphors uh, that the Bible gives us to understand or describe the work of the Spirit. There's over a dozen, well over a dozen. In fact, I think it's a testimony to the grandeur of the Spirit that one metaphor will not suffice. Uh, do you want to be wowed by Jesus? Well, the Holy Spirit is the ultimate teacher. Do you struggle to obey God's commands? Well, the Spirit is the wind of God that blows and gives us strength. Do your prayers seem weak? Well, the Holy Spirit is our intercessor. Maybe you're unsure of your salvation. Then it would be wise for you to get to know the role of the Holy Spirit is the seal of heaven on your on your saint on your soul. Uh, the Spirit is the dove of peace who calms us, the gift giver who equips us, the river of living water who flows out of us. So all of these are images to help us understand the assignment of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I believe one primary assignment of the Holy Spirit that is often overlooked 
was revealed to us by Jesus on the night before his crucifixion. Uh, the Holy Spirit's task is to teach us about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself said of the Holy Spirit, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. When the Helper comes, isn't that a great word for the Holy yes. Spirit? When the Helper comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, He will bear witness about me. He will convict the world. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. Again, the words of Christ. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, whatever, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Those are all phrases found in John 14, mm -hmm. John 15, and verse 6 in chapter 16. So the invisible presence of God on earth exists to help us learn about. Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul echoed this point in, in one of his letters. Paul said, no one has ever seen or heard anything like this, never so much as imagined anything quite like it, what God has arranged for those who love him. But you've seen and heard it because God, by his spirit, has brought it all out into the open before you. That's in 1 Corinthians 2, mm -hmm. verses 9 and 10. You know, secularists look for answers in human philosophy and knowledge. The world religions look to the teachings of their now dead founders, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius. Christians, however, hold to this inscrutable, this beautiful promise that our teacher not only spoke, but he speaks, he taught, but he teaches. And his wisdom is not confined to an ancient document, but it is part of the day-to-day -day curriculum of our mentor, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Again, the Apostle Paul said, the Spirit, not content to flit around on the surface, dives into the depths of God and brings out what God planned all along. God offers a full report on the gifts of life and salvation that he is giving us. Paul goes on to say, we don't have to rely on the world's guesses and opinions. And we didn't learn this by reading books or going to school. We learned it from God who taught us person to person through Jesus. And we're passing it on to you in the same firsthand personal way. Isaiah's question, is there anyone around who knows God's spirit? Anyone who knows what he is doing has been answered. Christ knows, and we have Christ's Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, all of those passages come from that chapter. Bottom line, we're not left alone with our questions. It's not up to us to solve the riddles of our existence. We have a helper. We have a divine instructor, and he will save us from the cul-de-sac of confusion, the dead end of doubt, and he does this by enrolling us in the primary course of his university, Jesus Christ. Jesus said he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Now this phrase, bring to your remembrance, is more than just jog your memory. It means make contemporary. The Spirit does more than repeat the words of Jesus. He makes them relevant. He unfolds their significance for the world in which we live. I can recall one afternoon early in my ministry when the invitation of Jesus to the weary became an invitation of Jesus to Max. I was supposed to be studying, but I could not concentrate. I was in the throes of weariness. I was battling insomnia. I had dozens of insecurities. I had many deadlines. I was under the false impression that I was in charge of everybody's life and I had to shoulder everybody's burdens. And also I had to do so without ever complaining or going weary. Well, after some moments, I, I just moved from my office chair to the chair I use for guests. And I bowed my head and sighed. And when I did, this scripture came to mind. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. It was the pronoun me that got me. I was turning to everyone and everything but him. The words of Jesus went from ink on a page 
to balm for my soul. Now, why did that verse come to mind? Simple. My unfailing friend, the Holy Spirit, my teacher, reminded me. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of Christ will do this for you, my friend. Isn't this great news? The Spirit, the person present at creation, the one alive in incarnation, the moving force in the resurrection, the mighty hand at the final revelation. He is your tutor, and he will reveal new and, and wondrous things to you. Came home the other day to find my wife, Dinalyn, on the floor playing with our two grandchildren. She had purchased half a dozen brightly colored, matchbox-sized car, cars, <laughs> And, and as I walked in, she was pulling them out of the bag. Rose and Max just went crazy. That's what you'd expect of a four-year-old and a 20-month-old toddler. Rose <laughs> knew what to do with the cars. She recognized them as self-propelling, and she took one, and she rolled it back and forth until the stored energy allowed the car to zip across the floor. Max, on the other hand, had never seen them. The idea was brand new to him. Dinalyn was thrilled to thrill him. And when I came in, she was on the tile floor teaching Max how to roll the car back and forth until it was ready to be launched. And when it exploded forward, oh, how he laughed with glee. Aww. And when he laughed, Deanlin laughed twice as loud. She was so excited to see him excited. The Spirit wants to do the same with you. He will be a Deanlin in your world. The question is, will you and I be a Max hmm. in his? You see, my grandson modeled this attitude, a childlike spirit, hungry to be taught, willing to be led. Humility is the soil out of which the fruit of the spirit can grow. Wow. So invite him into your world today and let your day begin every day with the words, welcome, Holy Spirit. And just make it your aim to walk in the Spirit by inviting Him into the details of each day. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit, wrote Paul. Let this prayer be quick to come to your mind in this moment. What are you teaching me? Or how am I to respond to this challenge, Lord? Or direct me, please. Which way should I go? And then pause and listen. Keep an ear inclined toward the Spirit because he's certainly inclined toward you. Mm. Wow, Max. First of all, what I see you doing here is I think of all these different scriptures as pearls about the Holy Spirit, and you just took and strung these beautiful pearls together to give us just a beautiful picture, almost like a necklace that we can put around us to just remind us of these scriptures. And I want to encourage everyone that's listening, go to John 14, 15, and 16, and write down these scriptures that he said, and go and just ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you through them. Thank you for reminding us that really that living and active word, that's the Holy Spirit, right? That makes the word living and active and penetrating in us. So that's what a great message. Thank you for that, Max. Thank you. Um, we are are so excited because we get three more weeks because I didn't want you to stop talking. I could have just sat here all day and listened. So we're going to have some more messages from you the next few weeks. And I'm going to I'm going to pray for us right now. And then we will um, do a quick close. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Heavenly Father, oh, thank you for um, your Holy Spirit who has just moved right into Max's heart and his mind and given him a passion for this topic of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for that. And Father, I invite you to just pour out your Holy Spirit on every person who's listening to us, Lord, who, who listens to this um, and become so very real. Be active and show up and help us to know that you really are a person. You really are someone who wants to come in and speak to us and minister to us and direct us and convict us and encourage us and love us. We are so grateful, God, for the gift of your spirit. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, we so enjoyed our time together with you. 
just the beginning of diving deeper into the Holy Spirit. And we always like to end everything we do here with our favorite saying at Proverbs 31, when we know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything.